the last say four or five classes what we've been doing is so to speak the Rebbe's Hashkafis so the topic I want to touch on today is the world in other words the Baal Shem Tev, to put it I think in what is probably the most accurate simple language changed everything without changing anything which is, of course, completely consistent with Taita. You don't change anything because Hakel Nitna Lameshim Isinai. And you change everything because you show in Taita a new idea. I'll give you an example, which is talking again to today's Shia, that the Balshemtiv, it says in Tanya, in quotes, Hatuv Ketan was Machadish, introduced a new idea that, um, that there is. His havas b'chol rega. That the Ebishter creates the world every single second. As it turns out, the idea of his havas b'chol rega is a medrash, medrash tilu. Or another example is that the Baal Shem Tev taught that there's ashgach a pratis also on the tzach, and demon tzemei achai. And the Alter Ebishter shows that there's a gemara mesech techulim. So the question becomes, how could the Baal Shem Tev take credit for a chiddush about his havas b'chol rega? In the Shkach Pots on the Tzach, as they state the Medrash Tilman, as they state the Gemara Mesech the Chulot. Huh? So the Rebbe loved Afkis, so the Rebbe said, the Peter Shabbat Hashem Tevzal doesn't mean the Bashem Tev created the Pshat, he was Mefarsim the Pshat. As if you were to say that until the Bashem Tev talked about it, Mataka Nishvashtan, and how could the Gemara say, Mishpatech Atahim Rabba, that the Ebish decides which fish is going to be eaten by which bird, and, uh, and, Vistach, our Apostle Borchi Nafshi, the Ebish created all every single second. So it's really true that in Chassidus you have this all the time. Chassidus is a very, very new derech. There's no question about the hashkafa of Chassidus. Yesodus deke chedushim compared to other hashkafas. But once you understand Chassidus, you can see that be'emesei lo zeshtayit in teireh, or lo zeshtayit in chazal. So what I want to talk about today is what did the Baal Shem Tev say about the world? What did the Baal Shem Tev say about the world, about the creation? We'll be to talk about Teira, Tefillah, and Mitzvah, Mitzvah in the next classes. But what did the Bashem to say about the world, about the creation? And of course, the, the, the one line answer is that the Bashem Tev's Chiddush is that everything has a Neshama. And that the Neshama of everything is the Ebshtim. Or to say it in other words, I'd put it this way. Until the Baal Shem Tev, people had a concept of the Ebishter being in heaven and the earth being a dark, cold, and death place. And that life, or the Ebishter, has to be brought into the world to give the otherwise cold and dark and death world light and warmth and life. And the Baal Shem Tev came along with a very simple axiom. And the simple axiom is, if you say, that this world by itself is cold and dark and death, and that you have to bring the Abish there to bring warmth and light and life into the world, how does the world exist until you bring the Abish there here? And there to Balvasham to added a simple Nuna Kudah. You don't have to bring the Abish there into the world, you have to discover that the Abish there is the world. You understand? In other words, the Balsham Tev's Chidish is in everything. It's true in Yidin, it's true in Tayyid, it's true in Mitzvah. You don't have to bring the Abish there into anything. You have to find the Yevishter in everything. Until the Baal Shem Tev, you spoke of here and there. In, in fancy words, you spoke about Tzimtzum Kipshote. The Yevishter is not in the world, you have to bring him into the world. And the Baal Shem Tev revealed, you don't have to do anything like that. The Yevishter is the world. You have to simply find and show how the world is the Yevishter. And in this light, there are two critical ideas that the Baal Shem Tev taught, and I guess on some level you would say the Baal Shem Tev revolutionized that uh, reflect us. And those two ideas are, number one, is Havas Bechol Rega. The idea that the Abish is making the world every single second from nothing into something. And number two, the Tashgach HaPratis is on Deimim Tzemei Achai also. The Tashgach HaPratis is not only on human beings or on Yidna or on Tzadikim, but the Tashgach HaPratis is on every single detail in the creation. And today we want to talk about these two points. We want to talk about this Havas Bechol Rega. We want to talk about Tashgach HaPratis. First of all, like I said to you before, his Havad B'chol says in the first page of Shariqat B'amunah, which we always learn on Shavuos, which is the Vashem Tev Yartzai, Kiedua, 
or the Baal Shem Tov Chaviv was the second day Shavuos. It's able to create the world every single second, nothing into something. And this, of course, is a medrash tilim, kuf beis, al pasuk bachin nafsh. A day which creates the world every single second. And uh, according to this hashkafa, the day which creates the world every single second, you have a different approach to various different things. For example, for example, there's a zayah which is brought in kuntus of mind. But I heard that Rebbe tell the zayah with a different pshat. The zayah I've said was a tana who used to sit down by his table with his food in front of him, with his food in front of him, and asked the Abisha to feed him. I should say it was a Tana, who would sit down with his food already in front of him. Not, he didn't have his food. The food was sitting there. He would ask the Abish. So the Kuntus of Mayan says, why are you asking the food? Your food is sitting in front of you. And he answers that he was davening that the food he eats should be his panos and not somebody else's panos. The Abish gives us a person panos. See, daven to the Abish that the food he eats will be his panos and not somebody else's. I should have but the Rebbe said a Pashtab Shat. What happens if one minute from today the Abish to create him again and does not create his food again? So he's diving to the Abish that if you choose to make me in one second from now, you should make me with the food still in front of me, I should be able to eat. Now, how much Amun does a person have to have to have a concept that it's possible that in a minute from now he will be here and the plate in front of him won't? This is a Khmer. But then that's just have us the Abish that makes the world. From nothing into something every single second. And of course, on that basis comes Hashkacha Pratis and a bunch of other things. Uh, the Gemara, for example, it says, Mishri Omar, Shemen Vyadlik, Yemav Chemitz Vyadlik. The same God who said that oil should burn should make vinegar burn, right? What's the Pashat Pshat? What's the Pashat Pshat? Mishri Omar, Chemitz, the Shemen Vyadlik, Yemav Chemitz Vyadlik. They wish made a nest. They wish can do whatever he wants. The Abish that made that oil should burn. If the Abish that wants, vinegar should burn also. Vishte Techasidis. Misha Amma. The Abish that created the world with Dvar Avaya. They created with certain words. And the Dvar Avaya gives into that Briyat Tchunas Anefesh. It's Tchunas Amhus. Shemen burns because Amma la Shem of the Yadlik. When the Abish that spoke, that the Abish should create oil, he spoke in such a way that oil should burn. Yaim Allah Chaymet Yadlik means that this second, when the Abish that makes this little bit of Chaymets, he should make it with such an amida that you give it to Koyach to burn. In other words, the nest wasn't that the Chaymets burnt. The nest was that the Abish to change the Dvar Avaya from Chaymets to be the same as the Dvar Avaya from Shemit. Yemel Hashem of Yadlik. Yemel Chaymets of Yadlik. Which is based on this idea the Abish Mahavadar Bechodar Gavadar. This is a very sadistic idea. The Shem creates world every single second. Or to say it in broader terms, the concept of Yesh Mayayin. Why is this so important? It's important because if you believe that the Abish that creates the world every single second, you must believe that the Abish is involved in this world. Or, I'm three problems behind the number, I'm going to learn it now, that the Abish that knows everything. There's a shita amongst the Apokos that say that not only doesn't the Abish know what's happening in his world, the Abish that cannot know what's happening in his world. The Zarich is why they have this Shita. But the short version is why did these upper course and why did Arista believe that God, their God exists? And he doesn't only not know what's happening in the world, he can't know happening in his world. So the short answer is because they believe that the Abish did is only Mahava Yesh Mayesh. They don't believe in a creator, they believe in an organizer. Sub Tzura. There is Chaymer Kadmin. There is stuff, there is material, there's things that always existed. And the Abish there, the God that they call today in the modern world, intelligent design, is simply a designer. He's taking the Choyme that existed primordially, that always was, and organizes it. So in this Shita, the Abish that exists, raw material exists, atom, atomic particles exist, and the Abish that organizes it. He makes it, it should all work out, he should create the laws of physics, there should be a universe. But once the Abish that makes his world, he leaves it alone. Until it falls to pieces, they takes the junk, and makes it again. In other words, their concept of God is simply what we call in our culture Yesh Miyesh, not Yesh Miyayin. So if you have that shita, you don't have to believe in Bahisavas Bacholadega. And you can even argue against it. But the Rambam, and of course Hasidus, says, no, the Abish is not simply a Mitzayah, he's not simply an organizer of primordial matter, but he's creating the matter Miyayin Liyesh. And the Al-Tarebbe argues in Tanya very fundamentally 
He argues it al and he argues it with Rais from Psukim, that if you change the nature of anything, you have to change it perpetually. If you want something to do something which is against its nature, it has to be perpetually sustained. So since we hold, he says, Teda holds, that the Abish world will yesh me'ayin, first there was nothing except for the Abish. And then the Abish that created the world, now where did the Abish create the world out of? He didn't create the world out of nothing. The Abish created the world out of himself. That's an incredible change. A shtick Abish did, whatever a peef by the Abish did, becomes a world. So you can't do it once, because the moment the Abish just stops making the world be world, it goes back to what it naturally is, which is Abish. And therefore there has to be, is Havaz B'chol Rega, every second Abish has to renew his world. So, Yesh Meyayin, Yesh Meyayin, which is the Chiddush of the Rambam, that every single second the Abish is creating the world is a very, very important Chiddush. Because it leads to another Chiddush. And the other Chiddush is that since you believe that the Abish is creating the world every single second, you also believe that the Abish that is involved. In other words, it's three steps, right? It's three steps. It's Yesh Meyayin, that's step number one. His havas b'chol rega. That's step number two. And then hashgacha pratis and isis amayfsim and nevuah and all these other things are step three. If the Abish is involved in his world, why can't he know what's going on in his world? If the Abish is involved in his world, why can't he change it? If the Abish is involved in his world, why can he not communicate with his creation? I the kashas that the apokursim had. So the teder says that I'm not explaining it. Who are you day and you do and who are mother answers all of their questions. But let's go through this again. The first step is the Rambam step. Yesh The second step and the third step is the Baal Shem. See this. Step two is that the Ebesh of Yesh has to be B'chol Rega V'rega. And step three is that because it's B'chol Rega V'rega, there's such a thing called Hashgacha Pratis. Hashgacha. The Ebesh is involved. And of course, when it comes to Hashgacha, you have a Gvald B'chidosh of the Baal Shem. And of course, for those who are interested in reading the philosophy, I mean, I'm here to tell stories, and I intend on telling stories, but if you're interested in the philosophy, you should read about it in the Rebbe's essay on Ashkach Pratis, which was originally printed in the Kutasir Cheskel Chesed Dei Sophis, and now it's in Igris Kedish. It's Mestam Bechel Kalaf. Mestam Bechel. It's not Chel Kalaf, it's not Bechel. It's a bad old history. Ashkach Pratis. Ashkach Pratis. That's the second step. No, the second step is Bechol Rega. Step one is Yesh Meyayin. Step two, the Yashbain has to be Bechol Rega. Yashbain is a Rambam, okay? His half is Bechol Rega is Tanya. And the third stop is Hashgacha Pratis, on that Tzach. That tzach. Um, there were all kinds of shoots about Hashgacha. All kinds of shoots about Hashgacha. But there was one constant in all of the shoots of Hashgacha until the Baal Shem Tev, that said that Hashgacha Pratis is something that you actually earn. They don't see Hashkoch as the way things are. They say, see Hashkoch as the way things are made. For example, the sheet of the Tzad, Hashkoch is on people. The sheet of the Tzad, Hashkoch is on Yidin. The sheet of the Tzad, Hashkoch is on Tzadikim. The three of the sheet is in Yishayim. And you know, even in Achreinim, the Shem and Amunim, the Munkach, the Achreinim, the Kanoi. And the Munkach ever wrote his Chesidim, was Olen and Shem and Amunim. Because the Shem and Amunim agrees with Baal Shem Tov, but he says, but when you get to Hashkoch, Slam the book. Because <laughs> the Shemin Amunim, who was just one generation before the Baal Shem Tev, he believed in Hashgacha like the Rambam. In other words, does the Abish to pay attention to every little detail of every single creation? And they said, no. People. Why people? Because they're important. Or Yidin, because they're important. Or Tzadikim, because they're important. In other words, the three Baal Shem Tev Shittas of Hashgacha really are more a schar than a Uvdeh. It's not Hashem's Hashgacha makes you what you are. It's what you are determines how much attention Hashem plays in your life. In other words, could an accident happen? The answer is, the bigger tzaddik you are. If you're more of a tzaddik, you have more Hashgacha, less chance an accident to happen. If you're less of a tzaddik, you have less Hashgacha. There's a greater likelihood. Uh, 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 if you're a rasha, if you're a goy, if you're an animal, there's no Hashgacha. This is the pre Baal Shem Tavshit of Hashgacha Paratis. Now, how does this make sense? This is the Yerushka's world. And he created every single second. How could it be that there shouldn't be Ashgacha Pratis? So the answer that they came up with, the pre Baal Shem Tev answer, there's two concepts in Ashgacha. There's something called Ashgacha Pratis, and there's something called Ashgacha Klolis. Ashgacha Pratis means able to pay attention to you and to every aspect of your life. And Ashgacha Klolis is Ashgacha Minas, able to pay attention to your species, to your type. 
For example, if there's a thousand lions in southern Africa, so in ten years from today there will be a thousand lions. But which lions live and which lions die? It's like the laws of ecology, right? We know now there's something called an ecological system, an ecological balance. Ecology means every animal and every plant needs every other animal and every other plant in an ecosystem. You take away one plant and a certain species of animal starts dying or starts multiplying too much and it messes up the whole system. But in an ecological system, which particular animal lives and dies is not what matters. It's that the species are preserved. So that's such a concept of Mashiach HaKolos. There's again the Heilig of Hashem Tevang Yisach Tnei. There's Hashgach HaProtest across the board. Every single tiny minutia in the tiniest little creations in the world, the Abish that personally judges and runs. Why push it? If the Abish just created you, ex nihilo, from nothing into something every single second, if literally every second, he's making you exist. So if he's making you exist, he's governing your Metzias. If he's governing your Metzias, that's Ashkoch process. He's involved in your existence because if he stops being involved in your existence, you stop being. So the Mahant of Zephyr held, there's a Hechrech. For Ashgacha Pratis of Chol Pratu Prat. And there's a Maimit from the Alta Rebbe that found the Gemara. It's such an interesting Maimit. That the Gemara says in Mesech Techulim, on the Posik Mishpatech HaTahim Rabba, that the judgment of the Eber reaches the abyss deep into the sea, that the Eber decides which individual fish will be eaten by which individual stork. The Eber says, Maz bin Dog Basuyam to a Sholach. Sholach. Sholach is a stork. It's a very good question. Right? That's the whole word. It's a, if it's a Gemara, why didn't they do the Gemara? It's basically. This is one of the ideas in the beginning. That there's things that Baal Shem Tov said, the Emerson said already in Chazal. Which is Ashtokha Pratis and everything. They, and, and the Lashon is over there that the Ebishter is giving an Einish to a fish. The fish deserves an Einish, which is a really weird thing. So the Baal Shem Tov taught that every single detail has a Baal Now I want to tell you this. I remember the Rebbe, when I was in Yeshiva, he kochzach in this a few times and I remember he used the Lashon that the Mittel Rebbe Matatzach the Mittel Rebbe who is a Ve'ana Go'inim struggled so much to resolve the sheet of Ashkoch HaPratz according to the Baal Shem Tev and the Ashkoch HaPratz according to the Rambam he didn't like the fact that there's a Nafka Mine between the Baal Shem Tev and the Rambam and the Rebbe said the Lashon the Mittel Rebbe Matatzach to make peace between the Baal Shem Tev and the Rambam and basically and the word basically is apropos here because I'm not going into the intricacies of it it's apples and oranges. When they spoke about Hashgacha, the Rishonim spoke about Hashgacha, they didn't mean if Hashem is or isn't paying attention. They meant if what the Abish did is doing makes sense to us. If there's Hashgacha practice across the board, there's a lot of Hashgacha practice that doesn't make any sense. Accidents happen. They were saying that Hashgacha means the kind of intervention and involvement of the Abish did which you will understand. So we say that if you're a tzaddik, you have a greater ashgacha, your life makes more sense. If you're a yid, you have also some measure of ashgacha. And if you're a human being, you have a certain measure of ashgacha. But if you're an animal, it's all random. It's all chance. In other words, they were talking not about whether Hashem is involved, but whether what Hashem is doing is to us reasonable. And the Baal Shem Tev is saying the fact. Everything is Bashgacha Pratis, even the biggest accident is Bashgacha Pratis. Everything is done by the Abishta. So in effect you can almost make the case that Mara Marchada or Mara Marchada Vale Pligi. It's two different in Yonim. They were talking not about the idea that Hashem is involved, but that what Hashem does makes sense to us. And the Bashem Tav was saying Amit Sadvar. Another condition I Hashem had to take care of Ashgacha Pratis. Because he's involved. He's making it this second. Yeah, yeah, of course. Bechol rega. There's three steps. Step one is yesh meyayim. Step two is bechol rega verega. Step three is ashkoch. But how does yesh meyayim mean that? Well, the explains in Tanya that yesh meyayim has to be bechol rega verega. The Rambam speaks about yesh meyayim. The Alter Rebbe speaks of bechol rega verega. And from bechol rega verega, the Rebbe's letters. You look at the Rebbe's letter. The Rebbe says it's possible to believe in Tzadik bechol rega, not to believe in ashkoch for this also. Now, but get to stories on Ashgach HaPratis. The Onashir Maish of Ashgach. Stories. Of course, the classic stories that everybody knows is the Maish of the Baal Shem Tev. The Baal Shem Tev once took his Talmidim out into a field and he told them to watch a particular leaf on a tree. And they saw the wind blowing the leaf off the tree and they watched how the leaf flip-flopped on the ground and stopped. 
The Rosh Hashanah told us Talmidim to follow this leaf. And they followed the leaf, and after a Meshach's man, a worm ate its way through the leaf. And the Hashem told them that the Abish, the plant from the beginning, his Mebedesh, that this leaf would provide first shade and then food for that particular uh, worm. For that particular worm. This is the famous story. Or another short story that's brought them in the Hashem is the master with a straw. The Hashem was in a dira, in an achsani, in a kretschmer. And he looks out the window and he says, watch, shows his Talmudim, and there's a big wagon with hay on it. And as the hay wagon drives by, a man pushes his hand into the bale of hay and pulls out one straw and he starts cleaning his teeth. And the Bashan says, you see, this man's teeth hurt. And he thought that the reason his teeth hurt is because there's food between his teeth. So he took a straw and he cleaned between his teeth so that his teeth stopped hurting. What he doesn't know is that his teeth were diseased. And that particular straw has a medicinal quality, the Baal to explain it. And it healed his illness, whatever it was. But he'll never know. <laughs> At Kemal he'll think he pushed it, had food stuck between his teeth, and he cleaned his teeth. And Amit is not vodim. <laughs> this was Ashkoch, but the Abish had arranged a refuah for this person, Kachmaka. But there are more involved supporting of Ashkoch Pratis. And I want you to know if you haven't looked at the Sikhs Khailik Vov, Pasha Bishalach, the Sikh Anlay Sone Litnoi. The Shittas Haramba, which is very interesting and very deep, incredibly, incredibly deep. What does the Rambam hold about, Hash- about the world? The Rambam holds about the world that the whole world is an Akuda. Like the 6,000 years of time, yeah? But all those 6,000 years of time by the Abish that exist in one Akudu. Or to say it in different words, before the Abish that created the world, the whole Shittah of Hashanah Hava Amma was an Akudu. The Rebbe says, the Ramam writes, that in that Akudu of the world, as it existed before the Abish that everything that's going to happen was already there. In other words, the Ramam writes, when the Abish that made Kriyas Yamsuf. When did Kriyas Yamsuf happen? In 2448? No. In 2448, Kriyat Yamsuf simply manifested. But from the moment of creation, in other words, the whole creation, as it exists, as in a Kuda Achas, everything was predetermined. So it's not the Pshat that the Ashkocha Pratis is happening now. The whole creation, all of it, including our free will, exists as in a Kuda Achas. In that Nakuda, whatever is going to unfold tomorrow, next week, next year, next month, next decade, next century, next millennia, is shown on It's already there. So when Ashgach HaPratis unfolds at a particular point, it's part of the greater scheme. The Ramam says there's never, there's, it's not a miracle that Ramam calls it. It's part of the creation. The Abish created that on this particular occasion, so and Kachvakach, like he is Yamsuf and like Matantena and so forth. And there's a story. And the story goes, and I hope I tell it correctly, that there was a Galach who lived in Spain, who was a Marana, who was an Onus. And he was discovered. They found him. And it was decided that they're going to burn him at the stake. They're going to burn him at an auto de fe. They're going to burn him at a public burning. As they used to do to the uh, Moranos. And they set up a stage. And they got an audience, a crowd. And they lit the fire. And they brought him out of the dungeon. And they took him out on the stage. And mamish a moment before they put his body on fire, there was a huge earthquake. An earthquake. And the earthquake was so severe that the entire uh, stadium, the entire amphitheater that had been <coughs> built to accommodate these kind of events, cracked and collapsed. Thousands of people were killed. And uh, the Galach saved himself. And he left Spain. And now he had a choice. He could remain an Onos. He could remain a, a hidden Jew. Or he could become a Yid Begoli. And he based his decision on the following question. He went around to Gedele Yisrael with a question. And he said that if he'll get an answer that will satisfy him, he'll become a Yid Begoli. And if he doesn't get an answer to satisfy him, he'll remain an Onos, an Istin. And his question was the fact that his life was saved. 
Was that, a, because of the earthquake, was that a nest that the Abishta made only for him? He knew for sure there was a nest. Shabbat Shalom. And all the people who died and all the buildings that were burned and all the calamities that happened were byproducts of it. Or is there a greater precision in the Abishta Zashgah? He knew for sure the Abishta made And he went from place to place until he came to Mezhebush. The Hilika Baal Shem Tev. When he came into the Baal Shem Tev, he was here to the Baal Shem Tev, his kasha. So the Baal Shem Tev told him, go out into the stable. You'll see a young man petting the horses. Ask him. <laughs> the Baal Shem Tev, <laughs> by me a stable hand, can I ask such a question? So he went not into the stable and he found the Revel Vul Jitomit, the Zav Jitomit. He was petting the horses. Baal Shem Tev's fed, the Necher of fed, under his heart and fed. And he asked him the question. And he told him what I just told you. Medvenikin. He said to him that not only was the Hashgacha that happened at that moment, the Hashgacha that affected not only you, but it affected every single person present. And every single little detail had its own precise prat of Hashgacha that was negated to it. But that each one of these prat, of Hashgacha pratis, was predestined from Kedush Hashemibdesh. Before the Abish to start at time, time existed as a microcosm. Time existed in a crunched way, in a, in a unified Nakuda. In that Nakuda, every single detail that would unfold on that particular occasion with these particular people and every single aspect of it was already predestined. And he liked the Baal Shem Tov's stable hands answer. <laughs> and he became a Yid. The Nochafan Amayt of the Helic Illusion. I've heard the story about the Baal Shem Tov, but Fala Khan writes about the Helic Illusion. It's, a, it's one of those stories that really makes you uncomfortable, especially when you think that it's an Emes and Mice. The Heilig Kerujner was named after the Baal Shem Tov. They say he was the Nishama of the Baal Shem Tov. And in so many ways, he was like the Baal Shem Tov. In one of the ways he was like the Baal Shem Tov was the fact that Nasach, he traveled a lot. Anyway, he came to a town, and he went into a hotel, to a motel, to a Kretschmer, and he opened up the front window, the blinds, the, the, uh, what they call the shutters. And he asked the, the host, the balabas, the proprietor of the hotel, to sit with him. And they sat together by the window. And he kept asking, Ved is dead, or Ved is dead. And he asked, who are these people? And they were walking by. Until they saw a yid, Begili Arosh, without a yamake, walking in the street, drinking from a bottle, beer. And the Rishnah says to this owner of Eredarid, who is this? So he tells him he's a paike in Ebecha from a Yid, a rab from Veg, the Tatazanik van Zeira Nerdacher, and he was in Zeicha, he got the Tzad Gil and so on. So the Hedek Rishnah said to the owner of the hotel, call him, summon this person. So they brought this person to the Holy Rishnah, to the Hedek Rishnah Rebbe. He came to the Rishnah Rebbe, and the Hedek Rishnah turned to Tzelta Maisa. There was a person who lived and died. Of course, I'm kumt of Yanevelt, like we learned now in Rambam, Mishpit Mendoch. The person is judged. Amatam Gimishpit. So, if you have more than so many, so many Zachis, you go to Ganeidin. More than so many, so many Avenis, you go to Gehenim, and so forth. And this person's Mishpat turned out to be Shava Bishava, 50 50. Exactly equal. Bene, which if, if you think about it, is very, very unlikely. A person should live a whole life and all of his actions should have to 50 50 is got a. Oh, uh, it's not so possible. Cholayf, and he was told that because his mishpat is shava, he has a choice. He can either go to Gehenim for a short time, or he can, the shava come back down into this world in a Gilgal, which means not in a human goof, where he could do more Avedis, but like a plant, or like a fish, where he, the shava could have an aliyah, and, uh, but the shava could also not have an aliyah. So the Neshama made a decision, call Adrocha Mechazka Sakana, going back into Elam Hazes Sakana, he'll take a few minutes of Gehen. So they took him to Gehen. And they, it took him, they were walking to Gehen in what seemed like hundreds of years. They were just walking and walking, this Malach Kabbalah taking him. And finally he starts to feel the heat. So he says to Malach Kabbalah, so that means we're almost by Gehen, and they said he laughed. He says, we haven't even began our trek. Anyway, it becomes so hot, his hair starts to burn, and his nails start to melt, and his skin starts to peel. And he says to the Malach HaKabal, so we're close to Gehenna now, so they laugh again, so we haven't even begun our journey. Until the pain becomes so severe, he says to the Malach I changed my mind, 
if this is the way to get heaven, it seems to him like hundreds and hundreds of years, and I'm not even halfway there, and I'm burning to pieces, tell the Bez and Shalmaila that I changed my mind, I'll come back down into this world. So one of them, Allah Chabala, sat down on the bench next to him. The other one went back, took a few hundred years to get back to the guy, Bez and Shalmaila, and they come back to the Nachapa on the years. said, okay, they were masked. Anyway, they the Shoma, the whole thing happened in seconds, in our time. But in Lamaila, it took years and years the Neshama was given the second choice. The Neshama came down into this world, and it was Bezgalgalus, it was rolled into, it was Nizgalgal in a barley, in a Sa'ira. And the Neshama sits in the field, and he sees and experiences that he's a Sa'ira, and of course nobody knows that there's a Neshama in this particular barley, it looks exactly like every other barley, and when the Neshama screams, nobody listens. And as he's sitting there in the barley, he sees the wind blows, and certain kernels fall, and in some of those kernels is other neshamas, and those neshamas are lost, and the barley is going to rot, and the neshama is not going to have an aliyah, and the neshama is going to have to do the whole process again, and the neshama sees the sakana, he can't help himself, he can't communicate with anybody, if he survives, he survives, Hadeb Shigahol, for this barley did not fall out of his husks, and then when the farmhands came, and they cut barley, and the cruelty, basically grabs a, grabs a hand of barley, and seven barleys fall down, and four neshamas have to go back. <laughs> if, if you could imagine, the ruchni is the side of it all. The sakon neshamadav, the neshamas are flying like nothing. It's pieces of barley. And his neshama, his barley is preserved. He's cut successfully, and he's bundled successfully, and he's put on the truck. And as they're traveling to the mill, one whole bundle of barley with 52 neshamas falls and rats on the side of the road. But his neshama survives. He gets to the mill, and he's ground into flour. And he's taken to a factory that produces beer. And he's put into the vat. I don't know how beer is made. Hops, they call it. And this neshama, which is now in the barley, is becoming beer. And beer spills on the floor in the, in the manufacturing. And invite the neshamas starving left and right. And his neshama is preserved and the process is complete. And the barley ferments and the, then the beer is put into beer bottles and closed. And put into a storage house. It belongs to a goy. And one by one people come and they buy cases of beer. Who's buying beer? Goyim are buying beer. This neshama thinks to himself, oh no, I'm going to end up in the hands of a goy. And the neshama go home. A goy buys, a goy buys a case of beer. And in the case of beer, one of the bottles is the bottle of this neshama. He takes it back to his kretchme. He puts it up on the shelf. And people are come to buy beer. Who comes into a goyish tavern to buy beer? Goy. And this neshama sees one by one the bottles are being taken down and being drunk by goyim. He thinks to himself, my turn is going to come. A goy is going to drink me. I just went through such trauma, such turmoil, and then a guy is going to drink me and waste me, and there's two bottles left on the shelf, and the neshama is in one of those two bottles, and a yid walks in. And the guy and the yid have a conversation. And they shake hands, and both bottles are pulled off the shelf, and the yid is handled, the bottle with the neshama inside. And the guy opens up his bottle, and the yid opens up his bottle, and they both drink. And the yid doesn't make a brach. And the Helech Yerush Nerev looks at this man and says, you just drank the Neshama of your father without a brach. You just drank the Neshama of your father without a brach. This is a story, you want to tell a story about Ashgach HaPratis, this is a story about Ashgach HaPratis. The Nochaf HaNocha Maisa, Mitten Baal Shem Tev, it's Negei to other in Yonim, but I'll tell you the story now anyway. At the Baal Shem Tev, I'll tell you the story again later, but the Baal Shem Tev, the Baal Shem Tev wanted to go to Eretz Yisrael. In the Polish is Akhman Dach, the Bashem wanted to go to Tzolk, wanted to meet Erechaim HaKadosh. I don't know, that whole Erechaim HaKadosh Pasha you don't have in Chabad. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about these things later, Mitchell. And the Bashem didn't want to go by sea. He wanted to go by land, Dafka. And there were a group of bandits who lived near where the Bashem was hanging around during the years that he was uh, learning with Achia Ashi And at first they wanted to kill him and take his wealth. But then they saw how the Bashem was walking off a cliff and the mountain came to be Makabal Ponov. So they realized that maybe this rabbi they shouldn't kill. So they became his friends. They asked him for a bracha. The Basham Tev said, they promised never to hurt a Jew, they'll give, they'll give them a bracha. So they promised never to hurt a Jew, and he gave them a bracha. And he told them that he wants to go to Israel. Anyway, they disappeared for a Meshach's manarav, these bandits. 
pirates. And when they returned, they told the Baal Shem Tev that they found the land route to Eretz Yisrael. And the Baal Shem Tev went with these Ratzchim to Eretz Yisrael. With these Ratzchim to Eretz Yisrael. And they walked for weeks. Weeks. In real time. Not in, you know, Gan Eden uh, virtual time. Real time. Until they came, they were out in the wilderness, they came to a huge canal, a very, very deep body of water filled to the top. And of course there was no bridge. So the way you crossed was that they would, you would take a stick, a tree, put it to the bottom, and you would catapult, you would pole vault, as it's called, across. You would take the stick, you would go back, and you would run, and you would hold the top of the stick and throw yourself to the opposite bank. And each one of these ganavim had become the Zalba Gishikta. Until it's saying the Baal Shem Tev's turn, he grabs the stick, and suddenly, Vayivka Hashem is enough. Baal Shem Tev saw that this is the entrance to Ganid. And that there is La Tacherev Amisapecha, a revolving sword. And he said, He sees it, if he crosses Achman al Asan, it's going to kill him. So Baal Shem Tev is in a, in a wilderness with killers, with murderers. And they just wasted two or three months on this trip alone. And before that, they had already journeyed all the way to Israel and back just for him. And the Baal Shem Tev says, I changed my mind, I'm not going. I wouldn't want to be in that particular moment with the way those Goyim reacted. The bottom line is, the Baal Shem didn't want to go. He wasn't going. And however he explained it to them, they didn't hurt him. And they went back. So the Goyim are furious. And the Baal Shem Tev is thinking, everything is precise. How would they wish that Allah that I should waste so many weeks drained the zwischen shade dem and rotzen for no end? When as they drained it, gained it, they came to a lake, a fresh body of water. And on the lake there was a frog that was a freak, it was the size of a man. A six foot frog, a frog which is Leopi to have a claw. And the Baal Shem Tev saw that in this frog there was a Nishama, a Gilgu. So the Baal Shem Tev asked this Nishama Miyata, or Miyat. And then the Shammah said, he's talking now 300 years ago, 300. I said, I lived a thousand years before. I mean, it's cool, I go in. And I was a big tzaddik, he said. And I was once mezalzal in the Tila Sedaim. One time, I was not so particular about how I washed my hands. So I was given an Einish Menash And my Einish is that I was given the Sionis tests, which I could not pass. And I became a Rosh Gomer, he says. I fell and I fell and I fell and became a Rosh Gomer. And when I died, they didn't let me into Gehenna. The Gemara says about Elisha Achim, it's the Mutter de Ladaina. It's worth going through Gehenna to get to Ganeid. He says, and my Neshama, Val Gitzach, a thousand years, my Neshama is Mizgal for a thousand years. And it's Dafkin, not in a Mokam Yishuf, where there's no people. So there's no Yit to be given me an Aliyah. And I'm always Nizgalgal and it's Fadeya and a frog because frogs are near water and my chet was with water. So the Hashem took a cup, and he made a shakal near Bidvari, he drank from the water, and the frog died. The Hashem Tev Ashtana, the Ebishter was Mesabif Sibis. The Hashem Tev should waste whatever, six weeks of his life, to be Maila one Hashem. And of course, there's the famous story of the Grace of Shlichas, and the Chayin Rappaport, where the Rebbe said, the Hashem said, that this well waited for 5,500, whatever it is, at 19 years. That a yit should come along, take a little water out of this well, and make a baruch and shakal niyim bedvari, and give this well tachas and amatot. Now, there's much to say about ashgachah pelatus. We don't have time. I just want you to know one more thing that I haven't said yet. And that is one more detail, which is very stark, but we don't have it directly for the bashan. It's in the Friedrich Rebbe Sichus and the Friedrich of my mother. And of course, the Friedrich Rebbe says what he heard from his father, from the Rebbe Nishmasi. That when you speak about Ashgach, if you want, but if you want to add the fourth point, if point one is Havaz Bechal and uh, point, is, point one is Yesh Me'ayin, and point two is Havaz Bechal and point three is Yesh Ashgach Pratis, point four would be that this idea, that you have Ashgach HaPratis on Deimim Semeya Chai, that every single detail in the work is Ashgach HaPratis, is that every little detail of Ashgach HaPratis, even in Deimim Semeya Chai, this is a quote, is Negea Leklolos Kavana Sabria, end quote. Negea, it touches Klolos Kavana Sabir, the basic purpose of creation, which means to say that of one aspect of the existence, of one tiny insignificant creature, which is Betabara Ara, it's hidden miles and miles and miles away from any human being, would be off 
The whole Kavanah Sabri would be messed up. The Fili Kerba Adis, Negei Leklolos. It's not only the image to pay attention to each detail, but that the details are so precise that if there be one tiny deviation, a variation, in one tiny being, that is so far removed from people and from Tehran, from Yibchir HaKavshis, it would destroy the whole purpose of the creation. Everything has been absolutely perfect. And the Friedrich Rebbe describes how his father used to travel for health at this Geheis. But the real reason was, at least part of the reason was, that he spent time with the Friedrich Rebbe. And the Friedrich Rebbe says, my father was told by the doctors he has to get frischer Luft. So he used to take fresh air. He would take walks for hours, six, seven hours a day. Wherever he was that in Western Europe, France, England, Germany, he went to places which were much more balabatish, <coughs> nice, bagashmas. They walked through forests. They walked al Khaifayam, They walked on a, a coastline. Friedrich Rebbe describes, and they would talk. The Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, Sean Weiss, every day. And they would start a topic. The Rebbe, the Rebbe, start a topic. And he would talk on the same topic for days and days and days. How many hours can you talk about Hashem Pratis? It took six or seven hours a day and they walked up for several weeks and the whole time that Eber HaShab was talking about Hashem Pratis and he wasn't repeating himself. There was so much to say. It's pillar ploy, but half of a fella. I mean, how much can you speak? Friedrich Eber described what used to happen. The Shpatzim, day after day after day, the Eber HaShab would choose a topic of like Reden, 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 so the Friedrich Rebbe once told the story, and I heard the Rebbe repeat it. And I remember how the Rebbe repeated it. That they were walking through a forest. And as they were walking through a forest, they were talking. The Friedrich Rebbe, the way it's printed in Lakut the Buddha, he plucked a leaf off a tree. He pulled a leaf off a tree. Now leaves, like all other organic things, have patterns. And as they were walking and talking, the field keeper was peeling strips off this leaf. Little strips. You know, it peels like, like chicken has layers. It was peeling like strips. You know, doing something interesting with his hands as they were conversing. Suddenly the Rebbe Rashab stops. He says, Drezest. He calls the field by his first name. Yosef Yitzchak. Here we are, talking about Ashkoch HaPratis. And how every single detail in creation is so near And you just... Glach Giltik casually took a leaf and you're peeling it as a, without realizing that who knows why the Abish created this leaf and what the Abish wants from this leaf and so forth. He was trying to bring out how careful you have to be. <clears throat> so the Rebbe repeated the story by Fabreng. I'll never forget it. The Rebbe was talking about whatever. I mean, it was after Mem Zayim Mem Chas, it was after I came back from Shlichus. I, I divide my years by the Rebbe before and after. And the Rebbe was talking about what happened, and he told the story. But as soon as the Rebbe started telling the story, the Rebbe turned white. Because in this story, Kum Tachais Achsar and Friedrich and Rebbe. And the Rebbe started making apologies for the Friedrich and Rebbe. It's so interesting to watch. He told the story to bring out the point. But he was so uncomfortable to bring out the Ayim, as Nit Betachas Ashlemus. He said, Erstens, is a Chnish Geven, the Rebbe Denossi. His father was the Rebbe of Nasser. He was still the son of the Rebbe. It was only Tzemech. It's only a plant. The Rebbe said that he picked up the leaf from the ground. In the story it says he took it off the tree. So it was Deimem Shebet Tzemech. He gave a whole bunch of explanations of what the Fiedek Rebbe did. It wasn't so terrible. But the bottom line is it brings out what the you know. And by the Rebbe this was Biz Bligvo. I mean the things there were certain anhogas by the Rebbe which are completely irrational which can only be explained based on this sheet. The Moshe, the Rebbe once made an entire campaign. A whole campaign. It was Mem Vov Mistan. Mem Vov. Why did the Rebbe make the campaign? The Rebbe made a campaign because I got a, a chain letter. You know what these chain letters are? You get a letter, it says, send a dollar to the person whose name is on top of this list and tend this list to ten people. It's a whole saga that you join a chain, it costs you one dollar, and you can get back ten thousand dollars. So you send it to ten people, and you ask each one of those ten people, send it to ten people more, and ten people more, and by the time it gets to four levels, you get back ten thousand dollars. The problem is, it's called the pyramid system. The problem is, there's not enough people for it to, the pyramids get broken. So on the bottom of the page, they have a whole bunch of stories, 
to threaten you. That if you break the pyramid, your neck will break, you're hit by a car. They bring stories that someone broke the pyramid in 1957, so also broke the pyramid. They try to make you frightened. So the Rebbe said, a woman writes me a letter that you got such a chain letter. So send a doll to so and so. Put your name at the bottom of the list and take off the top name and send it to 10 people. And you get better. And if you don't do it, Mr. Stadler threatened her. So the woman got very nervous. So she sent it into the Rebbe and she asked the Rebbe what she should do. The Eshet Achabichi Yizog Zor Reis Vafen in garbage. Throw it away. And don't be afraid. You're not going to break your neck. Not a shkai. So the Rebbe, Oh, the Nochem, Rangel Fahm, Magadank, why did this come to me? Why did I hear about this Sipa? It's such a not a shkai. So I decided that I have to make a, cha- a chain letter campaign. And the Rebbe made a chain letter campaign. He asked every sh- person to send ten letters about the Yen of Mashiach. The idea there is, the Yen was, that there's a in the bet Mashiach, the Fmon in Mashiach, the Rebbe brought the Yamot, uh, a Radak, a Radak, three Rishonim, a four Rishonim, he said, the Haftzadah for Mashiach, the bet Mashiach, and, uh, that, and asked each one of them, that they should in turn send it to ten people, and the idea was, that the Rebbe said, he had to make something of Kedusha out of this, because otherwise, why did it come to him? I'll give you a second example, which really boggles the mind. The Rebbe never ever threw away paper. If you sent the Rebbe a letter in an envelope, the Rebbe took the envelope and opened it up, deglued it, and used it for scrap. The Rebbe, if you sent the Rebbe a letter, and the piece of paper was only written two-thirds, he would take a scissor and cut the bottom and use it for scrap paper. He wouldn't throw it away. And we were always told growing up, if you write the Rebbe a letter, fill the page. Because any space that they leave in the bottom, they're going to waste his time cutting the scissors, saving the scrap, because they're not allowed to throw away paper. This is a Hanhaga, the Rebbe Sakhifik, Ali Yarin. I heard from people that around Memvav, the Rebbe let people open his mail. And one of the things they did was they cut off the bottom of the papers. So the Rebbe shouldn't do it. I mean, he had nothing better to do with his time. This is the Pshat. If you believe in Ashkacha Pratas, you're not allowed to waste anything, like the story of the leaf. 